One. What's up, Mortgage Coach community? Dave Savage, CEO of Mortgage Coach. Today, I'm interviewing a good friend. And uh, to say he is a special branch manager and leader in the industry is an understatement. Uh, Dave Gallegos, you know, one of the best branch managers in the country. What's up, buddy? How you doing, Dave? That's high praise indeed. Thank you. Well, you deserve it, man. You run a, you run a great shop. You know, you've, you've been part of the mortgage coach community and a friend of mine for, I don't know, forever, you know, well over a decade, and it seems like forever. Well, and we're both recently suffering Denver Bronco football fans. So, yeah, it's good to talk to you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's keep this call on a positive note. It's not going <laughs> to. Let's do. If you're watching this, it's 2018, towards the end of the Bronco season. We don't have a lot to celebrate from that standpoint. But uh, let me tell you what I'm grateful for, Dave. I'm grateful that the Broncos used to be really good. (laughs) (laughs) Right. And maybe we'll get some good draft picks out of this season. There you go. uh, There you go. Yeah. So, so the topic, Dave, I want to talk about, it's like, it's Q4 2018. It's been a rough year, you know, I mean, even some of the most successful loan officers in the country that by the way, are even having an up year. We'll just say, I have never been rate shop more this year than any recent memory. So, you know, I've been talking a lot about just the price compression but doing it from a perspective that it's, it's not going to get easier. You know, there's only more channels of competition. It's only going to be more aggressive in 2019. And, and yet you've managed to, you know, not only hire, develop, and train loan officers that have really high conversion rates, but they have really low pricing exceptions. You know, like when I look at some of your best loan officers, less than 10% of their loans are getting a price exception. So I, I want to, for other branch managers in the mortgage coach community, I want to, you know, if you could talk about that, you want your, your philosophy, your standards, and how you drive that type of uh, branch profitability. Thanks. Well, and again, thank you for all the compliments. I really appreciate it. The, um, I think it's the kind of, the, I'd like to say that, you know, oh, I'm, I'm really good at, I'm, I'm really good at being, at managing. I've, I've been able, been fortunate enough to hire some really exceptional people that want to work at a really high level. So obviously it starts with that. They have, you've got to have people on your team that have drive and ambition and they want to do a great job. And uh, not that other people don't want to do a great job, but you have to be committed to it. And it's got to be people that are committed to their craft. So that's, that's the first thing. I was that way when I was originating, when I saw a mortgage coach going back, I think I saw it at sales mastery the first time in 2000 or 2001. And I knew I had to have it because, and I've told you, for years, it's how I learned how to explain mortgages to people because up until then, all I was do I was doing what everybody else does, which is, or you're fixed, there you go. And um, once I learned how to use a total cost analysis and and really was able to explain to people how mortgages work and show you, let me show you how to save some money, um, you just change the conversation. And what I what I what we've always had here and what we've always taught and what we've always trained and what we've always required is that. You can't be what I call a quote and hope loan officer where you quote a rate and hope you get the loan. You've got to have a process. There's got to be a, um, you know, do you have a well, you have to have a well-defined sales funnel and a well-defined sales process that, um, and this is a great piece of advice that I learned from, I think Mike White is the one who told me this, but uh, Mike White's a great business coach, as you know. I know you know Mike and you have him on here a lot, Mike. Mike told me that whatever I say after I say, here's how we work, is how it is. And I think too often a lot of loan officers will let the customer direct how the conversation and how the process is going to go. And when you say, here's how I work, then you get to define the process of getting a mortgage, which for us is inclusive of a consultation where we're learning all the things that we want to learn about you and what your needs are and what's important to you about getting a mortgage so that we then have the opportunity we gain permission to become your trusted advisor by showing you a tool like mortgage coach with the total cost analysis so that we can show you how mortgages work so that we can give you all the tools that are necessary for you to make an intelligent informed decision about the best mortgage for you because as we all know one size does not fit all when it comes to getting a mortgage. So it's just been having that focus on, on a sales funnel and a sales process that is, um, that's designed to deliver just the highest level of customer service. And um, then the other thing I do is as a manager is like, if you get a price exception, I want to know why. 
Like what did you meet with the two and the two things I ask are, did that customer get a total cost analysis? And the second thing I ask is, did you meet the customer face to face? And those are the two things. And if you didn't do those two things, we have a problem with me giving you a price exception because that's not how we sell. And that's going to lead to price exceptions. It's just how it's going to be. And so uh, we just take a different approach. The other one too, and you know this, it's an old Tom Wardism is, is uh, where did you meet the customer in the timeline of them becoming a homeowner or buying a home? Did you meet them after they were under contract? Now you're a commodity. Did you meet them before they found their house? Now you get to be a trusted advisor, right? It's where in that timeline did you meet? Because if you're getting your leads from your referral partners after they showed them a house and they're under contract, well, now you are a bit of a commodity and it's a lot tougher. That's a tougher deal for sure. So, so let's, let's take the best. I want to make sure everybody got three points to optimize conversion and optimize profits and reduce uh, pricing exceptions. One, be thoughtful about, you know, where did you get that lead? Did you get it as early into the process as possible so that you can educate, create relationship and be a value provider? Uh, and, re and remember guys, I'm talking to you as branch managers. Like if you're on this call and you're a producing branch manager, you might do a really good job of this, but are you, are you mentoring your loan officers? Are you holding them accountable? You know, when they come to you with a price exception, are you asking, when did you start talking to that lead? How did you meet them? Now, now Dave, that's unique to your model where you, you really drive an in-office experience. There's people that are listening to this that like, we don't meet with anyone. And, and I, I think we all know that if you do meet with someone need to need face-to-face, you will get a better conversion. Uh, but if you're listening to this and that's just not your model, that's okay. Here's the takeaway. There's something else in your model that is a key success criteria. And, and I don't care what model you're in, the family getting a personalized, branded advice experience called a total cost analysis should be part of your model. You know, every loan officer should be delivering to every family. And, and if they're not, you're going to have more price exceptions and you're going to lose more loans. Dave, could you speak to how you, how you drove that standard? You know, how did you get your loan officers so that uh, they, they do such a great job at delivering a TCA, you know, so consistently? Because, you know, that's something that you're, it's pretty uncommon to have so many loan officers in your branch, you know, adopt mortgage coach so well? Um, well, I don't know, <laughs> I guess. Part of it is, it's a freaking great tool. And, and so I've not had a lot of issues with people adopting it once they see it. And, you know, if they weren't exposed to it in the past, that's different. And then you show them how to use it and you go through, you guys have some of the best training on the, on the planet, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to like learning how to use a tool. If you don't know how to use mortgage coach, it's because you haven't tried. It's that simple. And if you try all the training and everything is there. So, so I, I, for the most part, I, you know, it takes me showing people how to use it and I don't do that anymore. I'm just like, dude, go watch these training videos, go watch what this is. And then let's talk about how you're going to deliver that experience to that client. You brought up that not everybody's going to be meeting with their clients. Oh, I would tell you that you, you, um, and we're starting to think more along the lines of how can we be more locally focused? on our referral business. Like how can we be more local? When I say local, you know, you, you know the Denver market really well. Denver's spread out now, it's big and it's like getting to be Chicago-ish with like the travel and getting on the road and traveling and everything else. So that, that creates a potential issue for us. Should we be more focused? And I think the answer is yes, we should be more focused on the local, the people around the offices. We have three sales offices in the Metro Denver area. Um, we should be more focused on that. Let's be geographically centered a little bit better so that we've got clients that maybe they have to drive a 20 or 30 minute drive, but that's not the end of the world so that we can have the opportunity for a more, a better relationship because that's what I think in 2019 and beyond, it's going to be about relationships and it's going to be about your ability to, to deliver those relationships. And part of that is you got to be good at this. We make amazing money as loan officers, right? We make amazing money. My question is this, how good should you be at it to be able to make that kind of money instead of just expecting the company to keep taking a hit because you're not doing the most amazing job and you're not doing everything in your power to get the price. And 
what all companies have to do, Dave, you know this, I don't have to tell you, what all companies eventually have to do, if there's too many concessions is, they have to raise those margins even higher to offset the losses on the concessions they're giving. My loan officers understand that because we talk about it all the time and, and everybody's like, yeah, get your price. Let's get the price. So we got a bunch of people that are committed to like having, it, it contributes, being able to get the price all the time contributes to having a sharper price all the time, right? So, um, so that's part of it as well. So, you know, I, I had um, a couple pints with uh, Steve Brown. He's a former futurist, uh, chief futurist of Intel. And last night, and he was talking about how the mortgage issues, he was r running parallels to the, to the retail space. And yeah. he's like, hey, you've got one group of retailers, call it the low cost convenience, call it Amazon-esque mortgage. And then you've got another one, you know, where it's high experience, high service. And, and he's like, you know what? You can be one or the other, but you can't be in the middle. You get slaughtered if you're in the middle yeah, and, you know, on, mm -hmm. on, on margins. And so um, if you are a local referral-based mortgage professional, branch manager, I love what you're saying. You know, and, and, and again, I'm doing this interview a day. So he's got some of the best loan officers in the country from a production standpoint. We're talking one percenters. The loan officers I'm talking about are closing in excess of 30 million a year. And one of them is closing in excess of 50. They're getting less than 10% of their loans with the price exception. And then guess what else? They're getting some of the highest customer satisfaction ratios in the industry. One of them, you know, Giuseppe is the number one out of, I think it's 28,000 loan officers in social surveys, um, you know, study, he's number one. And then the other ones are among the top hundred. So, yeah. so, so I don't think that that's an accident. I think it's uh, it's the standards that you drive. So I want to I want to close out real quick. So if a loan officer comes to you with a price exception, you ask him what like just help us role play that so other managers can kind of adopt that language. <laughs> I say no, no, I don't. I say <laughs> no. Okay, what's the deal? And so uh, no, I um. Uh, they have to fill out a form and it's anything under, anything over 10 basis points requires a formal request, right? So, you know, for a couple of bips here and there, I think for the month of, month of November, I think I mentioned this to you before the call, it's about two grand under par for the month of November. So really like nothing. And, um, uh, but, but uh, you know, I, I just, I cover, I just ask those questions. It's, it's like, when did you meet them? Um, uh, you know, did you just get this from another deal? Like what, what's happening that you're just now getting this and did you, did they get a total cost analysis and did you meet them face to face? Those are the three, those are the three things. That doesn't mean I won't do it. I just, I need a good reason to do it. And then we don't say yes to everything. Some of them get crazy, but uh, uh, it's not that we say no to everything. We don't say, we don't say no to much. I mean, it's, cause it's rare that I'm getting asked, right? So it makes it easier to say yes when you're not getting asked 60 and 70, you got loan officers out there that are getting price exceptions on 60, 70, 80% of their loans. Yeah, after a while that gets annoying and I don't have that. So it's usually, it's, it's odd that you get the exception request, which makes it a lot easier to answer. Yeah, go ahead. And, um, uh, uh, but it's just not the common practice. And we have, I get a report every month of how you did compared to your, you know, how far under par you were. And I sit down and I have those conversations and we're talking about, you know, so it's just part of it is awareness. I think too, what gets measured, you can improve, right? So if, it, if, if you can measure it, you can improve it. And um, there's a lot of factors at play, but um, it all starts with the philosophy at the very top. Yeah. And, and, and here's the deal. If you want to deliver this high experience, high value business, you guys need to execute. So hopefully you're watching this. Hopefully you got value. If you are a branch manager that has questions or you want me to interview you and you're willing to share some of your best practices with the mortgage coach community, let us know in comments below. If you got a takeaway and you appreciate this interview and the conversation, like it. And, and if you're a regional leader and you're listening to this, I think this is a good interview to share with your branch managers to just say, hey, guys, we can do better. Dave Gallegos has got something to say here and uh, hopefully – for any, you know, heads of production and regionals, you'll play this forward. Hey, hey Dave, any last words of wisdom for other branch oh, managers before we wrap it up? Oh, that's it, dude. Thank you. Um, uh, my, my, I guess my last bit would be, um, you know, commit to being 
the professionals that we get paid to be because we get paid a lot of money to be in this business and uh, it's a great industry. Um, I love what you said about the pick a road. Uh, you got to be, you got to decide, are you price or advice? And um, if you're price, we're, you're doing this, you're in the wrong channel. If you want to be in the price channel, you got to go work in a call center. You got to go do something different than that. If, if that is my opinion. So Thank Take you. Care, man. Thank you, everybody. Go Broncos. 19, yeah. 2019 is our year. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Yeah. See you later.